Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having an awesome day. Y'all, let's do something that we love. Let's have some fun paper crafting. Stay tuned. So today we're going to make something that is not only simple, beautiful, but practical because that is how we do it on this channel. We do make beautiful projects, but we make our projects with a purpose. We make them so that you could sell, gift, or keep it. And we make it so that it can be used for any season, any reason, any gender. And that's what today's project is. And even though today's project has a feminine flair to it, all you have to do is change the papers and the embellishments and it becomes a true any season, any reason, any gender gift. And this is what we are making today. I'll give you a closer look once we go over the supplies, but I just wanted to give you a general overview of what it's going to look like. But it is a five and a half by seven and a half inch folio, but it is a folio with a useful twist. So y'all know what time it is. It is time to make it. And so here is the up close look at this beautiful, beautiful folio. And on the front, I kept it very simple. I applied some of my Anna Griffin paper flowers using my sticker maker. And then I used one of these beautiful Tim Holtz metal embellishments just to highlight my little sticker here. And it says Epic Day. And what we have on the inside, I have created my own five by seven tearaway notepad. And what we have here are some pages. And on each page, I have placed one of my flowers just to give it a little dressy look. And then I created just a little holder. So if you wanted to replace the pad in this book, you could. And on this side, I have a pocket for some envelopes if you wanted to include envelopes with this. And we will go over the process for making one of these gorgeous envelopes. We'll only make one, but you'll understand how the process works in case you want to build something similar to this for someone that you want to give a gift to. And it's just a very simple little folio. We have our sheets for writing, then envelopes are mailing. And if you wanted to add a pen, you can add a pen right there using one of the loop techniques that I have demonstrated. So here is what we're going to need to make our project. My pad is going to have 20 sheets, so I'll have 20 of these flowers that I have applied adhesive to the back. And then I have this scrap strip that I'm going to be using to make the refillable holder. So this is just a scrap piece that measures 12 by two. We'll cut it down, but we'll start with that. Then I have 20 pieces of five by seven cardstock. I have some chipboard. I have one piece that is one by seven and a half and two pieces that are five and a half by seven and a half. Then I have this piece that I'll be using for my pocket and this decorative piece measures six and seven eighths by three. Then I have my inside liner and it measures seven and a quarter by 12. And then I have two pieces of eight by 10 decorative cardstock that we're going to be using to make the jacket for this project. And so the first thing that we want to do is we want to join our two pieces together. So we're going to take our tape and place the tape along the 10 inch side. And I'm using a half inch for my double sided tape. Then I'll take my second piece and we're just going to join these so now we can flip this over and we're going to place this down just like this. So the first piece I'll place down will be my spine because I want to make sure I have that spine hitting the center point of where we join these two. So what I mean is I am going to take that joint and make sure that it's running right down the center of my spine. So I'm going to take my spine Place it down like so. Then I'll take my two pieces that measure five and a half by seven and a half, and I'm going to place that on both sides of my spine. And I'll be placing it down a little larger than an eighth of an inch. Not much, just slightly larger. And let's go ahead and do this side as well.
And now I'll place this down. So then I'm going to take my stylus, press it against the chipboard, and just go around the paper, digging into score, so that if my paper should want to crack, this might help to minimize it. Now I'm just going to remove just a little bit of that. And I'll remove just a little bit on this side as well. So now I'm just going to stand this up, fold it over on all sides. And now I can make my miter cut. And all I'm doing is making sure that when I do my edges, I leave a little bit of my paper so that when I fold over, I have a very professional cut. So now I'm going to take my tape and just place my tape along all four sides. And then after we've peeled away the tape, we are going to fold over these pieces so that we can wrap this jacket. And then before I fold this over, I'm going to place just a little bit of glue right there in the corner because when I folded this paper over, it covered some of that tape. So I am just going to fold it over. And I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to place just a little glue right there on the edge. And then I'll just fold it over. And now I'll use my big old spatula to come back and get everything nice and stuck. And then I'll also go along my edges to make sure I have everything nice and crisp. And now we can place our liner piece. My liner piece measures 12 by seven and a quarter. I am going to take my tape and we'll place some tape on this chipboard first, just to cover it. doing is covering the chipboard. I'm not worried about covering that paper because we will be placing some tape on the liner piece and that will cover the paper that we haven't covered with tape. Peel away the backer for the tape. We'll set this to the side and we'll go ahead and place our tape on that liner piece. Bring in my liner bring in my half inch tape and I am just going to place my tape along the edge of my liner. You can also do this with your reptile glue or whatever it is you happen to be using, but we just need to get all four edges covered with tape. And we only need to put it along the edge because we've already placed tape on that chipboard. Okay, so now that we have our tape on the liner, we can peel away the backer and we'll be ready to place this down on our jacket. So let's take this piece and bring it back in. For me, it's better if I stand to do this because I get a better placement. My placement won't always be perfect. So then when I place that down, you can see that I have a fairly decent placement. Standing really does help when you're placing this liner. So now I'm going to take my big old spatula, 
define my spine and get that defined on one side and then I'll do it on the other side as well. Make sure I've got a nice stick. And then I'll just take this and I'm going to just reinforce that spine. And I think that that looks pretty good. So I am going to bring in my piece that measures six and seven eighths by three. And we are going to make a very quick little pocket. So I'm going to place it in my scoreboard on the six and seven eight side. And I'm going to make a mark at a quarter of an inch, half an inch, and then three quarters of an inch. Rotate it to the opposite side. Make a mark at a quarter, a mark at one half, and a mark at three quarters of an inch. So then when I take this piece, I'll take this piece, fold it backwards, get my middle fold, and this is what you'll end up with. Hopefully you can see that. And then we'll do the same thing here. So you're going to have three score marks. Take that first piece, fold it in, fold backwards, and then fold it in. And you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Now we're just going to take this piece and put it right here. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our glue, place glue on that inside fold on both sides, and then we're going to take just a dab of glue and place it right there in the bottom pinches, just like that. And then I'll take my glue and I'm going to place it along the bottom and that's going to give us a little closure. So now I'm going to take this, place it down, and get it stuck. And this is how we get our simple little accordion pocket. Clean up just a little bit of that glue. Give that a chance to dry before I really try to stress it by pulling it like that. And so now we're going to take this and just set it to the side for a moment. We are going to bring in our 20 pieces of five by seven sheets and any um, flowers or stamping that you want to put on it. We'll be doing that right now. I am simply going to be putting down some flowers that I have already applied the adhesive to the back and turn them into stickers. So guys, if you happen to have a Xyron um, five inch, the Xyron three inch, or the Xyron nine inch, that'll work perfect for these. And if you're lucky enough to have that 12 inch, that's even better because you can do them all in one pass. So I am just going to take this and decide where to put it. Now, some of you are probably saying, why are you putting such a big flower on this five by seven? Because what I'm making here is really just a cute decorative way to be able to give a quick note to someone. Something as simple as saying happy birthday. If I wrote happy birthday, Denise, love Sherry on here and put it in an envelope, that's really cute. So. That is why I am taking the time to put these large, beautiful flowers on this piece. Now yours don't have to be as big as mine. You don't even have to put flowers. You could actually stamp a message if you want it, but I think that that is just so cute. And to me, it just adds an air of romance to something so simple as this being dressed up in this way. So when I have a piece where my flower is too large, all I'm going to do is trim off the excess. And now this could be the bottom or it could be the top. So all of my flowers are down. And I think that that just looks so pretty. And then I have this five and a half by seven and a half inch backer that I'm going to put down and it's just a thin piece of chipboard that happened to be in a pack of paper that I ordered. They had it sandwiched between two pieces. 
and that's usually a thinner chipboard so I decided to keep it and use it as the backer on my project. So now I just want to decide whether or not I want it to go this way or at the bottom and I think I am going to have this going this way. And then I have a scrap piece that I'm going to place on top so that when we make this temporary notepad, we won't have to waste any of the good pages of this. Okay, so what I've done is I have stacked all the pages and the backer together. I added my clips so that everything would stay nice and tight. Now I'm just going to take my glue and I am going to run a bead of glue across the top. I'll use a piece of scrap chipboard and I'm just going to spread that glue. And that's why it helps to have that tear away piece because you can see how the glue came over, but that's not going to be a problem because once this glue hardens, I'll be able to tear away that scrap piece. And this is the difference between making your pad permanent and making it a tear away. If I wanted this to be permanent, I would use my reptile across the top. If I don't want it to be permanent, I am going to use my hot glue because that will allow me to tear away. So let's see if I'm dry enough to do my tear away. And yes, you can see that my top sheet tore away easily, but I still have just a little bit of overhang glue that I need to come in and clean up, but that's no biggie because I'll just take my scissors and snip away that excess. And now I have this beautiful tear away notepad that we'll be able to place right here. So I am going to bring in that scrap piece that was two by 12, and we are going to trim that down to seven by 12. Then I'm just going to take it not even put it in my scoreboard. And I am going to fold this into three sections. And I'm going to take some of my reptile glue, place some glue down, get that nice and stuck. Do the same thing on this side get it nice and stuck. Then I'm going to take my pad, go to the back of the pad and place that in just like that. And it'll be sticking out from the back and I'm just going to take it and when I fold it, and I'm going to fold it so that I'm giving myself just a little bit of slack And I need that slack so that when I'm sliding my pad in and out, it's not too tight. And you can see how when it's folded, it's sticking out the side. So I don't have an exact fit and an exact fit is not what we want. So I am going to go ahead and just take some glue, place it on the back of that. Then I'll take this and I'm just going to place it down wherever it is I want it. And I'm going to make sure that it is not hitting the spine. So now I'm going to remove my pad so that I can get in there and get that nice and stuck. We're going to let that dry before we put the pad back in and we're going to go ahead and just make an envelope. So to make my envelope, I'm going to start with the piece that measures seven and a quarter by 12. On the seven and a quarter inch side, I'm going to score at one, rotate it to the opposite seven and a quarter inch side, score at one, then we'll rotate it to the 12 inch side and I'm going to score at four and a half. And then I'm going to score at nine and five eighths. And then we can fold and burnish on our score marks. And so now that we have folded and burnished, we are going to make this smaller flap is the top. So we're going to go ahead where that score mark is, notch out 
a triangle. Then we're going to go ahead to the point of that triangle and just angle in a little bit. So let's just notch out our triangle. And by doing it this way, you'll have better control over how much you're notching out. And then we'll come to the bottom, do it the same way. So just go to the, go to the score mark, make your notch, and then we'll notch out all the way down. We'll do the same thing over here. And then we'll notch. And doing it this way gives you better control over how much of an angle you're actually putting. So we're going to fold that and then we'll fold that up and fold that. And then we'll have this envelope that we can put in our pocket here. And this time I decided to just shorten the length of my envelope because chances are if I was writing a note, I'd actually take this and probably fold it and place it in the envelope. So, and I'm going to take this piece and fold it up with some glue. So I'll just take my glue and go on the edges. Then I'm going to take a little bit of glue, place it right there in the middle here. Then I can pick this up, bring it up, And now we have a sweet little envelope. So then we're going to take another one of our flowers and I'm just going to put it on the outside of my envelope as just a little decorative piece. And you can use all types of pattern prints for your envelopes. They don't all have to be the same so I'm going to tuck that in right there. I'm going to take my sweet little tear away notepad and just place it right in there just like that. And already I think that that is just beautiful. I am so in love with this look. And so now since I have this open space there at the top, I want to find just a little saying I'm going to see if I can get this one to fit. And I think I can, but I'm going to move this towards me so that I can try to get it nice and even. I'm gonna stand it up and look at it just to make sure. And so what it says is dream, love, create, inspire. And I think that that really is a nice topper for that. Now we're going to do just a little bit of decorating to the front. And so I'm going to take these two flowers and I'm going to place them down. Right now I'm just kind of playing with them to see where I want to put them. And I think I'm going to put them like that. So I am just going to peel away from my backer sheet. And just remove this one. I'm going to take it, place it on the front of my folio, just like that. And even by itself, that is beautiful. So then I'm going to take this piece and I think I want it coming down like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just peel this off. And now I'm going to take it and just sort of crisscross right there. And I love how that looks, but we're not done yet. Again, we're going to take one of our Tim Holtz medals and place it right there, but I need to get a saying for the inside. So I'm going to go through my sticker pack and see if there's anything that I really like. And so I found this sweet little sticker that says create and it has a butterfly. So I am just going to place that down. Then I'm going to take this piece to see if it's going to fit and it looks like it will. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim this out. And now when I put that down, I can take my metal, 
place it on top and that's going to be gorgeous. So I am going to use my reptile glue, place some reptile on the back, put this down where I want it. Let me make sure I've got it nice and straight. And then because my reptile is so versatile, I'll just be placing some on the back of this metal. And guess what, y'all? It's going to stick it. So now I can take this and just frame out the word create. I'm going to pick that up just to make sure I have it nice and straight. We'll give that a chance to dry, and then I'll be right back. And now you can see that we have a very beautiful folio. And when you open it, you have this beautiful tearaway notepad that we made. And then you have a pocket to place envelopes or any other littles that you might want to place in there. This is absolutely simple elegance at its finest. And these are the things that we love doing on this channel. We love taking chipboard, paper, stickers, and turning that into something that you could very easily sell in your Etsy shop, sell at a craft fair, give as a gift and be proud to give it. So beautiful, so simple, so posh. So I am going to bring that first one in so that you can see just how gorgeous these actually are. You saw how simple it was to make it, even how simple it was to make our own pad to go along with this. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.